Now that we have the general drift, let's move on to Android. In one aspect, Android is easier than iOS, as it's based on Java. However, other aspects make it a bit painful, and in most regards, harder to work with than iOS. We will first use Android Studio 3 to build the project, since this is pretty much what Google demands. The first step in building on Android is mostly about running through the IDE steps. The first step is the new project option. When setting the project details, the most important bit is the package name. It should match our main package name. I left the default settings for the target platform and changed. This should work fine. I chose the blank activity. I'll create one manually later. We are now presented with a progress indicator and then after a while Android Studio finally loads. Notice that you might need to resolve issues in the IDE if it connects to older versions of the Android SDK installed in your system. The first thing we need to do once the IDE has finished loading is configure Java 8 support. The Kone 1 build servers translate the built bytecodes so they will work with Java 8 support on Android. We need to do that since we have no access to the source code in the servers and we want to remain compatible. However, Java 8 is now supported in Android Studio and this will allow your code to compile unchanged. Notice that the core codename 1 code is still Java 5 compatible. To do this, we need to first pick the project structure option from the menu. We then need to set the source and target compatibility to Java 8. The next step is to edit the build.gradle file and add support for our sources. Notice that there are two build.gradle files in the project. You will only need to edit the one for the Android project itself, which in my case was marked as module colon app. After you make changes to system files, Android Studio offers to sync the project again, which you should accept. This is the full code, but you should probably take the lines I highlight in the modifications. Let's scroll down and look at the changes. I added a source set section that points at the sources of the kitchen sink project. That way they appear in the hierarchy but we don't need to copy them. I added all of the dependencies to the build. Notice that we don't actually need all of the dependencies. The build servers delete code that you don't need based on build hints. So if Facebook support isn't need necessary, it will delete Facebook impl class and won't place the Facebook dependency. The same is true for the other dependencies mentioned. We also need to make a minor change to the Gradle properties file by adding the, this line. This is required for some of the style code later on. The next step is copying the Android implementation sources into the project. Since the Android implementation sources don't include the codename one sources, we need to start with that. These commands are executed from the kitchen sink directory so they are relative to that path. Notice we copy the codename one code first and the Android code second, so files get overwritten. Also notice we delete all of the files in the root of the project source, not recursively. The root of the codename one and Android projects include resource file that, files that should be placed in a different location. Android expects all resources that aren't in the res file to be within the assets directory. We need to create that directory in the hierarchy where the res directory resides. This copies the files from the roots of all these projects. Notice the order of commands sets the priority since projects on the way can override the parent project. Following these instructions, you might be thinking, why copy? We included the source of the kitchen sink. Why not do the same for the implementation? The main problem is overridden files. Codename 1 redefines the Codename 1 thread class 
in the Android implementation and relies on that redefinition taking the priority. We might do more of that in the future. This is also important because you might want to delete some files such as Facebook support. So copy makes more sense in this special case. The next step is the activity class, which is Android's lifecycle object. This is pretty, a pretty standard class in Android, so I'll add the code and step over it like before. We have a codename1activity base class, which is important for the main activity, as we handle some nuanced events there. Most Android apps use onCreate to detect app launch. We use onResume, which is more consistent for our needs in terms of suspend resume behavior. These lines effectively initialize codename 1 and start the EDT if it isn't running. We also allocate the kitchen sink main class if it isn't allocated yet. I did the allocation on the Android thread, which isn't ideal, but the callback should be invoked on the codename 1 thread, which is why we have this call serially here. Now that now on the EDT, this is the first time we need to invoke the init object method of the main class. Otherwise, we are resuming. We try to be smart about the current form since Android has a tendency to restart activities for everything. Start is invoked with every call to resume to match the lifecycle behavior of codename 1. The same holds true to stop and destroy, both of which are pretty trivial. The rest of the code is just boilerplate and uninteresting. We invoke stop and on stop and invoke destroy and on destroy. Now that all of that is out of the way, we just need to configure the XML files. First we have the manifest file which represents all of the activities in the application. The manifest isn't really important here. I just used the default manifest generated by the IDE and updated the activity entry. Notice that most of the entries within the activity are essential for the app. We also need a layout for the main application. So under the res slash layout directory, we need to add the file main.xml. That's a pretty simple layout just to give room for codename one itself. We need three style files to support all of this. The first is styles.xml, which resides in the directory src slash main slash res values, which just includes theme and not much else. The second bears the same name, but resides in the directory src main res values v11. Again, this is pretty trivial and hard coded for all the apps. The final one also has the same name, but resides in the directory src slash main slash res slash values v21. It includes some additional settings for newer versions of Android. Now that all of this is done, you can just press play in the IDE and run an Android on an Android device. There was a bit of boilerplate, but I hope it's clear.